Welcome very much. Uh, those who are watching for the first time, you can follow us. You can as well subscribe our YouTube channel, Refi Forest TV. Uh, today I want to talk uh, on a very important topic that as a believer, there is something that is expected from you. As a follower of Christ, there is one thing that is very important that God expects to get from you. And today, in the next 10 minutes, we shall look how to show love and respect to others. Love and respect. And when I talk about love, uh, it is important to note that love is the most important thing in the life of a Christian, in the life of a believer. Because even the Bible says that it was love that made God to send his only son to be sacrificed for the sake of our lives. Because we were sinners. The Bible says that because of the love that God loved the world, he gave out his best love. And even before we get into deep about this issue of love, I would like you to go with me to the book of First John. Yeah, go with me in the book of First John, that is chapter 3. Uh, we shall read there from verse, um, verse 11. And the Bible says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning. This is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That is a commandment by God. I know maybe you are watching and you are wondering, how am I expected to love those people who show contempt towards me, who hate me, who persecute me? I know it is hard, maybe, people who are wishing you bad things, people who are wishing you death, how then are you expected to love them? Maybe you are asking yourself, how then do I need to love this person? He is trying all the means to demean me. He is trying all the ways to ensure that I have perished. I know that laughing sometimes is hard. And that is why you need to have the Holy Spirit. Because it is the Holy Spirit that enables you to do so. On your own, you cannot be able to do it. Maybe you are looking at your family. There could be that person who wishes evil things again is still. But the Bible expects you to love that person. And that is why it is important in your life to overcome the Holy Spirit. Because he is the one that helps you. Naturally, you are not able to do it. Naturally, you are not able to fulfill this promise or this, uh, this commandment. And this is the greatest commandment of all. You need to love the other person. The Bible says, uh, Jesus told the, the disciples, you need to love your neighbors, you love yourself. So it's a very important commandment. And God is expecting us to love others because himself, he loved us. Even when uh, we were sinners, even when the relationship was destroyed, we know what happened in the fall of man. The good relationship that existed between God and man was ruined. But because of the love that God had towards mankind, the Bible says that he sent his best. That is Jesus Christ. So what do I say here? Yes, I know it is sometimes hard to love that person who wronged you. But I have stopped here to tell you, you need to do so. You need to invite Holy Spirit. This is one of the work of Holy Spirit to enable you. Actually, that is the, that is the, the major work of Holy Spirit. The work of Holy Spirit is to help you to do things that you cannot be able to do naturally. The things that you cannot be able to do on your own. The things that you try to do, but the outside man poses a problem. That is the work of the Holy Spirit to help you. You know, when Jesus was ascending back to the Father, he told the disciples, I'm not going to leave you like orphans. Because he knew they could not have been able to overcome the world. He knew it was hard for them. 
But the Bible says that Jesus told them, I'm going to give you a helper. And that is the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is the one that helps you to do things that the world would see as if they are not possible. The difficult things. That person who persecutes your children, it is the Holy Spirit that helps you to love that person. That person who gossip at your workplace, that person who made your boss to fire you, it is the Holy Spirit that can help you to love that person. That person that hates your family, that person that hates your parents, how can you be able to love that person unless you have the Holy Spirit? And love is the greatest commandment, as I have said previously. Because we are a followers of Christ, we are expected to show, to exhibit the traits of Jesus Christ. God is love. You need to love that person. Even that person that costs a lot of pain in your life. The Bible is telling you to love that person. The way that you love yourself, you are supposed to love that person. Yes, that person that is making you to cry right about now. Maybe you are crying because someone has caused pain in your life. The Bible is saying you need to love that person. You need to have for, uh, you have the spirit of forgiveness and you love that person. The problems that we see in this world, if people can obey this commandment, if people can love their neighbors, if people can love other peoples, like they love themselves, there are many problems that we see in the world, we could not be seeing them. Because if you love someone, you cannot take out his life. You cannot kill someone if you love him. If you love someone, you cannot talk behind his or her back. The Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. I'm saying this. If we can exercise this commandment, and this is the greatest of all, then the world will be a better place to live. Because if you love someone, you cannot wait him to kill him. To grab what he has. To grab his land. To grab his property. If you love someone, you cannot torment his children. You cannot torment the orphans. And therefore, Jesus knew that if people can exercise love, the world would be a better place to live. And love is the greatest. Actually, the Bible says uh, in 1 Corinthians, there chapter 13, verse 3. If you read verse 3, the Bible says that, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. Feeding the poor is good. I have no problem with it. I also do it. But the Bible says, even if you do that, come on, if, if, even if you do that, even if you feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, even if I can give, please somebody understand this message. Any person that is watching me, kindly, if this message blesses you, I beseech you to share this. Help someone else. Someone who is, who, who is having difficult in this commandment of love. The Bible is saying very clearly, that is First Corinthians. Let me repeat because of the people that are, are joining us for the first time. We are talking about love and respect. First Corinthians, the Bible is saying very clearly that and though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be bad, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Even if I can give my body to be bad, even if I can sacrifice my body, even if, actually, there first what the Bible says that even though I speak with the tongues of men and tongues of angels, but I have not love, I have become sounding brass or plating symbol. 
And though I have the gift of prophecy, even if I can prophesy greater things as they come to pass, even if I can prophesy to people, even if I can prophesy about the nations, even if I prophesy about continents, but I don't have love and I don't understand the importance of love. The Bible is saying, even if I have this gift of prophecy, even if I understand all mysteries and knowledge, I know it all. So that I could remove mountain. That's the Bible that's saying there. That even if I have faith that can remove mountain, and so that I could remove mountain, but have not love. Oh my God. The Bible says I am nothing. If my faith is so great that it can move the mountain the way Jesus said, but I lack love. I am nothing before the blessings of God. Even if I give a lot and I don't have love, even if I take all my possession and I dedicate them unto the Lord and I don't have love, uh, the Bible says I am nothing. So, why do the Bible say this? The Bible doesn't say it is bad to have faith. It doesn't say it is bad to prophesy, but it is trying to show the importance of love. Because God knew or God knows it is love that made him to give out his best. And if God himself gave out his best, who are you? You are also supposed to show love. You are also supposed to love your neighbor. We sinned against God. We know that the good relationship that existed with our previous parents, Adam and Eve, it was a good relationship before they sinned. But the Bible says that they sinned against God. And the good relationship that existed between man and God, it was alienated. Man was alienated from God. That relationship was broken. But because of love that God had, I feel I'm talking to somebody who is watching me. I feel I'm talking to somebody who is watching this video and God is telling you that you need to exercise uh, this commandment of love. Because God himself, despite our sins, despite what happened in the, in the time of Noah, God still had love for mankind. Despite many times the children of Israel, they failed God. God was still faithful in terms of loving them. And that is why he would send a deliverer to deliver them. That is why he needs you to laugh. He needs me to laugh. You and I, we are expected by God to show love. It depends my heart to see people, especially believers, people going to the same church, people in the choir, they can talk to one another. They don't have love. Yet, the Bible, there is no gray area when it comes to love. There is no gray area when it comes to this commandment. And that's why Jesus said, this is the largest commandment. We know there are many commandments. You can fulfill all of, you can fulfill all of them. And actually, you are expected to do so. But if you don't do things, oh my, if you fail to observe this one, you have missed all of it. You have missed all of it. So I'm talking to somebody. There is someone that you are carrying him in your heart. Yes, I don't refuse. Maybe he caused you pain. But I have stopped here to tell you that you need to let it go. You need to tell Holy Ghost. I told you that the work of Holy Ghost is to help you to do things that you cannot be able to do naturally. That is the work of Holy Ghost. That is the main work of Holy Spirit, by the way, to help you. Jesus said, I will send a helper. And therefore, I'm talking to somebody who is having bitterness because you cannot be able to laugh if you fail to have, for, uh, to have the spirit of forgiveness. You cannot be able to laugh if you have bitterness in your heart. And I have stopped by here to tell somebody who is watching me that you need to let it go. Yeah, I know there are people who cause pain, and not just pain, 
There are people who causes a lot of pain to other people. But I have stopped to tell you as the word says here. This is the message that you heard from the beginning. That this is the greatest commandment. That you need to love that person. There are blessings that may not come into your life until you let it go. And therefore today, the person that I'm talking to, I want you to evaluate your heart and see the person that you have been carrying for many years. It could be a family member, it could be a colleague, it could be a member of the church. I don't know who it is, but I have stopped here to tell you that you need to let it go. And you need to exercise the spirit of, or the gift of love. And we have been told that love suffers long. That is verse 4 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 4, the Bible says, love suffers long and it is kind. Love does not envy. So if you find yourself having jealousy of the other person, you don't have that person. Because love do not envy. That is one characteristic of love. Love covers a multitude of sins. Love do not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave rudely. Characteristics of love. Love endures all things. It is love that makes you to endure that person that did belong unto you. It is love. And the Bible is saying that love never fails. Other things may fail. Friendship may fail. But love, one thing I know about love, it never fails. And therefore today I'm talking to somebody. You have been doing all other things. You have faith and it's well. You prophesy and it is good. You help the poor and congratulations. But if you have failed in this one aspect of love, I pray that may God help you. May God help you to love. May God help you to let it go. May the grace of the Lord be upon you so that you can be able to let it go. That bitterness in your heart, that person that caused you pain, that person that has been persecuting you, the best thing that you can love to him or that you can do to him or her is by loving him or her. I want you to take a few seconds and look back at your life. Look the far that God has taken you. And I want to do this. I want you to think about that person that caused you pain. Three years ago, five years ago, many years ago, one day ago. And I want you to say, I let it go. I want you to breathe in, breathe in, and think about that person for a few seconds. Think ab about that issue that has been making you not to laugh. And then breathe out and say, I let it go. And then you are going to see the mercy and goodness of God. If Jesus himself, he is the one that insisted the importance of love. The importance of loving the other person. And if God himself loved us to an extent of sending his only son, who are we to carry other people in our hearts? Who are we to fail to forgive other people? If God himself, we say that God is love, who are we then not to love other people? Love is the greatest of all things. You have been doing fine in other areas, and it is well. Continue doing it, but please exercise this gift of love. This is a gift of the Holy Ghost. It's a gift of Holy Spirit. And today I pray that every person that is watching me, I know that this video is watched 
in all parts of the world. I pray that you may exercise love. I pray that you may let it go and that you may tell God, I need to have love in me. I need to love my neighbor. I need not to harm him because you cannot harm the person that you love. You cannot envy the person that you love. You need to show love in all those areas. And that is my prayer. That if you have love, you not think evil. That's what the Bible says. That is verse 5 of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. That if you have love, you will not rejoice. You will not rejoice in iniquity. Because love do not rejoice in iniquity. But love uh, rejoices in the truth. And the, the Bible says that be as all things, believe in all things, hope all things, endure as all things. I pray that may God give you love that never fails. May God help you to know that you are a child of God and you need to bounce back if or with love. Jesus said that if they beat you this side, give them the other side. What the Bible actually is trying to say, don't pay evil by evil. And they say that two wrongs do not make a right. The Fijians belong to God. Don't refage on your behalf. Let God refage on your behalf. Let it go. I'm talking to somebody who is experiencing pain and not just the pain. I'm talking to someone who is experiencing extreme pain. I want to tell you that let it go and fill that gap in that heart. I want you to do this. Fill that gap with the love and God is going to help you. Because I know that it is hard to love the person that caused you pain. Let me pray that the Holy Ghost may help you to love and to exercise this gift and to receive this gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you because of my viewers. There are many people who are watching me from all parts of the world. Others are in Europe. Others are in Middle East. There are others who are in Kenya, my God. I pray any person that is having pain, oh God, let this message penetrate in their heart and let them let it go. Whatever it is that they have been carrying for many years, my God, I pray that you may help them, that the Holy Spirit, because the work of the Holy Spirit is to help us what we are not able to do on our own. May then Holy Ghost help these people. May Holy Ghost give them this gift of love. Let them love even the people that has caused them pain, even the people that make them to be fired, even the people that has been talking behind their, their back, even the people that have that, that have been tormenting their children, that have been tormenting their parents, that have been frustrating their destiny. My God, let them pounce back uh, with goodness. Any evil that is given to them, my God, let them further bounce back with goodness and with love. And because the Bible says that Fijians belong to you, God, let these people not refuge on their behalf, but let them be filled with love, oh God. Any person that is trying so hard to forgive so that they can have love and they have failed to do it, my God, I pray that the Holy Ghost may help them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I do pray and I believe. Amen, amen, amen. Shalom.